anything to say to Stephanie about South Africa, your work on the environmental story there? Um, I can take both. Okay. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of preliminary research involved with South Africa. Um, it took about a month and a half, maybe, to figure f finally find somebody who was reliable enough that could lead us to the right places. Uh, we had originally planned on going to Grahamstown, which was more of a rural area, but um, that fell through at first. And then we wound up going to Durban, which is actually a fairly large city, has a population of about three and a half million, and we were able to track down all, all aspects of, all different kinds of sources, technical experts, people who could tell about their stories firsthand, um, politicians, teachers, professionals. And we decided that we would go into uh, what was known as the South Durban Basin, which is basically a valley where there's a lot of factories, refineries, and scattered among them are these small, very impoverished communities that, um, it's actually a rather astounding number. Uh, it's about, in this one community that we visited, there's about a 90% un unemployment rate. And the ones that are, are employed are employed by the factories that are polluting the environment and putting all these harmful chemicals into the air, which in turn has led to these people contracting asthma, all sorts of cancers, leukemia. And um, we were lucky in the sense that our student that we were working with had grown up in that general area was familiar with it. The community that we actually went to was not his place of origin, his place of birth or where he grew up, but he was familiar with it. He knew of the people, knew what they were like. Um, so he was able to, he was able to immediately get that trust for us among those sources. You know, we were traveling with him, people had recognized him, he was popular within that area, that community, and there, therefore, it was just very easy to establish that early link with our subjects, with our sources. Um, in terms of finding the right person, the right character to tell the story, I mean, there were many. Um, the issue was supposed to be about the environment, but you know, it's very, it's got a very South African character to it. Um, it, it was people were very angry about the fact that they were being relocated. Uh, these factories, these corporations, they're looking to expand their operations and they were trying to take land away from these people and move them away from a community that I had been living in for more than 30 years. And um, so already there was a great willingness on their part to share their stories and share their emotions. I mean, they had no other option. They were very frustrated. The government had done nothing for them. The ANC, the African National Congress had done nothing for them despite repeated promises from them for better housing, better accommodations, and that ultimately never came for them. And once they knew that they were moving into these woefully insufficient um, dormitory-like flats, they said, well, you know, what else do we have to do now? I mean, the press, we were actually working with some, some other local press that we happened to run into, and everybody was very willing, very, very happy to tell their story. What do you think, when they tell their story, what do you think is the cathartic effect of that for them, or is there one, when they talk to you about their situation? Practically or emotionally? Yeah, both. both. Okay. Um, I think. What do you think their expectations are? Well, I think their expectation is, number one, you know, they, they have no other option. They've gone to the government, they've gone to charities, they've gone to organizations that have promised help and aid to them, but they obviously never got it because they had wound up in the situation that they were in. Um, a lot of it, you have to realize, is a lot of internal politics. Uh, it's a complicated story because there's years and years of years of backstory to what had happened mm -hmm. the week that we were there. Um, I think for them, emotionally, <coughs> they, are, they are thinking that you know, some good might come out of this. Somebody might look at this who is in a position of power, position of responsibility that they could help or bring something to them that, that could improve their situation. And <laughs> it's actually kind of interesting. There's a quote that one of the women told me is that she wasn't afraid to admit it, is that because of their unemployment rate, 90% of, uh, of them are unemployed, um, 
they were very dependent on handouts. She said that flat out. We are very dependent on handouts and people giving us things to help us survive. 